Maple Leafs training camp began today and we are going to take a look at the roster and what some of the staff and players had to say before the on ice sessions begin tomorrow. Let's take a look at this training camp roster and to spare you all of the names being read, I'm going to talk about some of the most interesting players in this roster. So we're going to begin with some of the Marlies who are in this training camp roster. Semyon Dargachinsev, Curtis Douglas, Max Ellis, Pavel Gogolev, Pontus Holmberg, Bobby McMahon is another one, Nick Robertson, Logan Shaw, Graham Slager, Alex Steves, and a few other defensemen, Carl Dahlstrom, Noah Hoffenmeyer, Mac Hollowell, Miko Kokinen, Philip Kral, Tommy Miller, and Marshall Rafai, Axel Rindell, and William Villeneuve. Whew, there's a lot of names going with Marlies, and a lot of them are interesting. I totally forgot that some of these AHL guys are going to be in, and I forgot the fact that Dryden McKay and Keith Petruzzelli are also on AHL deals, who will also be in this training camp. So it's gonna be interesting. Obviously the guys on AHL contracts, I doubt will get a spot, but this is just the beginning for them, the start of training camp before they head down to Marley's training camp, which should begin in the next week. Obviously the three big names in the Marley system, like I've mentioned before, probably a few times, Nick Robertson, Alex Steves, and Pontus Holmberg with Pierre Engvall looking to be sidelined for a while now. It seems like one of these two or both of them could get a spot. I know Zach Aston Reese is going to be a big player who could potentially do some damage in training camp as well as Adam Gaudet but I believe Alex Steves and Nick Robertson are just gonna push just as hard to try and get a spot for opening night. There are a few players like Semyon Dargachinsev. I think Bobby McMahon, Kyle Dubas mentioned in today's press conference that he's going to be another guy pushing. I don't know whether or not he does. He's going to need to have a strong camp for that to happen. And it would be pretty cool to see Bobby McMahon open the season in the NHL rather than the AHL. I just think Alex Steves and Nick Robertson have the upper hand right now. Look at the defensemen. I highly doubt there's going to be any Marley's defensemen going to make the jump to the NHL this season. I mean, the possibilities there for Carl Dahlstrom with Lilligren out, but again, there's the fact that there's Jordy Ben and a few others, Victor Mete as well, who could easily get that spot. Or unless Rasmus sending signs beforehand. Looking at the goaltenders though, Dylan Ferguson on a PTO, Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov are going to be the guys. There is no chance that they won't be the guys unless there's injuries that happen to either one of them. But as it goes right now, and as Sheldon Keefe said, in his availability today, those two are going to battle it out. They're not going to have a number one goaltender. They're just going to have a one and two tandem. I'm interested to know how Keith Petruzzelli and Dryden McKay fare against some of these guys. McKay coming in to this season on an AHL deal. Petruzzelli already spent one year with the Marlies and Newfoundland Growlers on another AHL deal. He's going to be an interesting look too. They're both really good goaltenders and they'll be having fascinating seasons, whether it's with the AHL Toronto Marlies or ECHL Newfoundland Growlers, but I'm very intrigued to see how they could maybe fare against some NHL competition before heading down. And then of course, as we know, Eric Schalgren, he is going to begin the season with the Marlies and if there are any injuries, he's going to come up. But Eric Schalgren and Joseph Wall, who is injured right now, should be the two guys with the Marlies this season. And pending no injuries will be the number one and two for them all season long and hopefully they can stay healthy and have some good seasons down in the ahl going back to the forwards for a second dennis malgan is another interesting one who i forgot to mention who could have an interesting role in this team with Engvall out or getting a role on the fourth line. And then Zach Aston Reese, who was actually signed, Kyle Dubas said, when they found out about Pierre Engvall's injury. Speaking of injuries, now let's talk about the Mikhail Abramov was injured at the end of last season. Ryan Hardy, before the prospect tournament, said the injury lingered throughout the offseason, so he did not participate in the prospect tournament. He is not participating in Leafs training camp. It looks like Pierre Engvall, as we know, was injured. Timothy Lilligren and Joseph Wall, who was also injured at the end of last season. Now, Dubas did begin his availability talking about the injuries and the length 
of some of them. So let's take a look at that right now. From David Alter, Dubis updates injured guys. Mikhail Abramov has a back injury and not at camp. Joseph Wool out with a shoulder injury. Pierre Engvall out with an ankle slash foot injury, reevaluated on October 3rd. Timothy Lilligren had hernia surgery and is out six weeks. So as it stands right now, Lilligren is going to miss the entirety of training camp. There is the possibility though that Pierre Engvall gets in on the back half and could play some exhibition games before the season starts, but they'll have to reevaluate, like I said, on October 3rd. And that's a possibility that he comes back. There's going to be the opportunity for Zach Aston Reese. There's going to be the opportunity for the Alex Steves, Nick Robertsons, Dennis Malgins, Pontus Holmberg, Bobby McMahons to all get a chance in the spotlight before Engvall returns. Now there's a lot to talk about today in terms of training camp roster, media availability. So we're gonna try and get through it. A lot of the stuff that I wanted to put in this video were the most interesting things. So that's what I have for you today. From Joshua Cloak Dubis, our goal is not to win one round. Our goal is to win four. Our goal is to win the Stanley Cup. Now this addresses two things. First off, Kyle Dubis did talk about the fact that he is not not signed to a contract as of right now for next season. So this is really the big make or break year for him and the team to really get it done. And that sort of leaked into this question where they were asked what the success level would be like for the Maple Leafs this year. Is it winning a round? Is it winning two? And Dubas responded with the goal that is winning the Stanley Cup. Now, I doubt he would say the fact that winning a round would be a, a bit of a success for the Leafs. He wanted to say that winning four would be the success. I do think though, maybe if you look at getting to the second round, it would be a success. Obviously they're not gonna say that because it's not a success in their eyes, but winning two rounds, in my opinion, would be a lot better than winning one or going out or winning none in reality. When Dubas talked about his contract situation, I, I did really appreciate the fact that he said he wasn't worried about it. I, I think the mindset that he has right now to just focus on the team and not really care about a contract really shows for me how much he cares for the team and how much he would rather put the team in front rather than himself. And two, the fact that this is his bet year. This is him betting on himself, betting on the fact that he is going to do some special things with this team. Now it's just a matter of seeing whether or not he can actually perform and do it. But all in all, it's really nice to see that Kyle Dubas is saying this rather than, yeah, we're gonna take a first round win and that's gonna be it for us. That's gonna be good. It's nice to see that he's saying we're gonna win the Stanley Cup, or at least that's our goal. After Dubas's availability came Sheldon Keefe, and he talked about a number of things. He talked about Nick Robertson and the opportunity he's going to have, which is a big one throughout training camp. He also spoke about a few other things. From David Alter, Keefe says they will try different things during training camp as far as different looks. Says Bunting, Matthews, Marner is likely to stick together. Wing spot alongside Tavares and Nylander is open and may explore splitting the duo again like he did last season. I don't have a problem splitting Nylander and Tavares up. It actually increases their depth a lot, but it also at the same time limits what they have in that top six in terms of firepower. I think a really good line would be obviously Nylander, Tavares, and then Robertson on that right side. I know there was a little bit of discussion with Callie Yarncroft there, Nicholas Abe Kubel. I don't really enjoy that so much. I think those two guys are very good in the bottom six where defense is needed. I think in the top six, you really want that firepower and adding Nick Robertson to a line with Tavares and Nylander will give you just that. But you also have to remember as well, looking at the roster last season against Tampa in the playoffs, they didn't have a lot of depth firepower, which had them really lost in the moment when they needed it most. So maybe Robertson fits on the bottom half. It doesn't really look like he does because he wouldn't be able to drive play. The bottom line is he'd be able to perform better alongside two really 
really strong players like Nylander and Tavares, and I think allowing Robertson to start there at the beginning of training camp and the beginning of the regular season only sets him up for success in the future. And speaking of Keith and Robertson, from Mike Stevens, Keith on Nick Robertson. He's going to get opportunity. He's going to play with good players and get an opportunity to contribute. Now, this is one of the most exciting things, I think, when you're looking at this roster, is the fact that Nick Robertson has the ability to do a lot of great things. He has the mindset, he has the want, he has the drive. It's just a matter of putting it all together. And once again, with Nylander and Tavares, I think that's the best option for the Leafs and Robertson to have success. Like, imagine putting him with David Kampf and Callie Yarncroft, for example. He's not really going to be able to have that success because that's a more defensive line, whereas John Tavares, William Nylander are more as good in the offensive zone, and they are good in the defensive zone too, but they are so much better than Camp and Yarncroft would be in the offensive zone, which would help Robertson a lot. To me, putting Nick Robertson in the bottom six would just set him up to fail, and I don't think the Maple Leafs want to do that because they really want him to be an NHL caliber player. So the top six is, I think, where he must fit in. After Dubis and Keefe spoke, a number of the players spoke, and I'll be honest with you, there wasn't really much from the players that was really interesting. A lot of them talked about the fact that how last year wasn't the best outcome and they want to improve and do more this year, similar of what they said last regular season at the beginning of training camp. So there wasn't really much. I think the only interesting thing from the players came from Austin Matthews when he was being asked about his contract and he said, this is the only day that I will answer any questions about it because for one, it's so far away and for two, it's just a distraction. Why would he want to talk about it? It's so far away, there's no point. So he shut it down immediately saying, this is the only day and he also discussed why he would like to stay in Toronto. From David Alter, Matthews on what makes Toronto home. The city has embraced me and my family. I've just grown comfortable in my own skin here. It's such a special place to play. Now my take on this whole contract discussion thing is the fact that it is so far away. Like I get that he can re-sign next year. I don't know if you want to see me make another video just about this situation because I do have a big opinion on it. It's just the fact that it's so far away. I don't think we should be talking about it. It's obviously fun to look at and fun to think about what he could get in his next contract because I think it'll be a lot more than what Nathan McKinnon got. Again though, if you want to see me make a video on that, I can. But I, I totally understand where he's coming from, where he doesn't want to answer these questions. I totally get where he's coming from when he says how much he loves to play here. It's a great city to play, covering the Marlies. You can see the fans in the stadium, especially at Coca-Cola Coliseum, how passionate they are there. And when you look at the Leafs fandom at Maple Leaf Square, there is just another level. So, I mean, I can understand both sides of him not wanting to talk about it and him being excited for these next few years, but uh, it, it's so far away. It is so far away. I do think he'll resign though. That's one thing. I, I think he's here for life unless he wants to go play for LA or possibly go to Arizona, which I doubt will ever happen with the arena situation right now. And finally, I wanna end the video off on a good note and we're gonna talk about what Dubas said about Rodion Amarov and his recovery. Dubas said, we had a follow-up with he and the doctors that are managing it from Moscow and Germany. It's obviously become a more difficult situation to manage in person as things have developed in Europe. So where he's at is that he's through his final round of chemotherapy and and what we're working on now is a consultation appointment with an immunologist to see if he's able to travel over here and be around the team to train and participate in on ice training and hopefully return to play. So that's some really exciting news. We obviously know already that he's been traveling with his team in the KHL. He's been skating with them as well, which is a very good sign and good news. I, I just hope this guy is able to resume his hockey career. I hope as well he's able to stay healthy and hopefully 
if he gets rid of the cancer that it hopefully just doesn't come back ever again and he's able to live a regular life. So as of right now, wish him all the best and hopefully we see him in Toronto soon. Now though, that is going to be it for me and Leafs training camp day one. Tomorrow they begin their on ice session. So I'll likely make a video around that, surrounding what lines they put together, anything like that. And we'll talk about that. But let me know what you think about all the quotes all the training camp players that are going to be there for the Maple Leafs in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about it all. If you really enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you really, really enjoyed it, subscribe. That helps a lot. And yeah, Leafs training camp opens up tomorrow once again. And we'll see you in the next video.